Okay guys, this is uh, Dylan aka Remy the Rogue here with my long-awaited collection room and video game room tour. Um, so I'm going to start off with a couple shoutouts first before I get everything uh, on the way. One, going up to my my, my friend uh, Chris. What's up buddy? Um, huge video game collector like me. Um, does some great pickup videos. Um, also fellow Canuck, so gotta support our own man. Uh, us Canadians, we're all brothers up here man in the great white north. Um, secondly, again, thanks to Victor, man, for giving me a shout-out in your shout-outs video. Uh, brought a bit of traffic to my channel, so thought I'd do the same. And, again, without any further ado, um, hit out of the collection room. Okay, so first off, I'm going to start in the corner, and you guys see me do all my reviews in. You can see my reflection in the mirror. Okay, so first off, we have my Neo Geo arcade cabinet. This is a one-slot board, currently running King of Fighters 94. Um, fully restored, well, internally at least. Uh, case could use a bit of work, but what the hell, it runs and it plays, and because it takes cartridges, I just took the screws out of here, so if you all can see, I can change the game out for without even having to go into the back. It's set up on free play, because, hey, I don't need to be making any money off this. Then we're going to move on to the first display cabinet, which is my... Ikea Besta with the glass doors. We have my Darth Maul, which you guys can see a review of. I'll put an annotation somewhere in this. See? Get a little view of the piece. Again, guys, sorry about the glare. Um, that's it having glass and fluorescent lighting. Up front, we have one of the master replicas. 45 scale lightsabers. My focus. Right. There you go. And this is the Collector Club exclusive. This plays really well with the Darth Maul piece. And across the top, we have my Ami Kami collection, which is a lot. I'll maybe get rid of the door. I'll help with the glare a bit. There you go. Which is a line I have actually been getting into really heavily over the past year. For the price you pay, these are really high quality statuettes. Thank God. Harley Quinn. Then I have the Holiday 2 pack, which is a holiday variant of Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. Then I have Catwoman version 2 and the purple color scheme. And we have Artemis. We have the new Steampunk Batgirl, which was released uh, about a month ago. Get focus. There you go. And if you guys want to see any reviews or any more in-depth videos on the Amikami figures, um, or anything in this video, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be glad to show my review. Because if it teaches you guys something about a piece and it makes you want it, then I feel like I've done something out there. Because I just want to pass my love of these pieces on to you guys. Which I think almost every content creator wants to do. So yeah, the last two pieces you saw were Supergirl and Star Sapphire. Let's get a group shot of everything. Okay, and then moving down we have my Rogue Premium Format. Which was again seen in a review, so I will again put an annotation to that. And her X space. And this you can see really how I have all my pieces positioned and posed. So the way I like to see them. Then my copy of X Men 24, which I think displays perfectly with this piece. My favorite comic cover of all time with my favorite comic book heroine of all time. It's a great combination. And then across we have my Kotobukiya Artifacts War Machine. Which I am a huge War Machine fan. And personally I don't think there are any real nice statues out there that make War Machine in a, um, menacing. If we give him some presents, let's say that. Um, the bone one is nice, but I don't think he looks big enough. 
This is somewhere between the 6th scale and the 5th scale, as most Kotobukiya pieces are. I don't think any of the PVC ones are in true 6th scale. This is actually my next review I have planned. Alright, because I think it's a really underrated piece, and you can still pick them up for around $100. So, if you do 5th scale, if you do 6th scale, um, collect, pick them up. Or if you're just like me and don't really care about scales, uh, even better. And going down, you have my beloved Cyclops Premium Format, which I'll have an annotation to right here. And go down to his rock base. Okay, guys, sorry about that. My battery had just died on my camera, so I swapped out my second one. Like I was saying, you have the Cyclops with his rock base. And his light up feature, which I'm not sure I focused on in my review, but as you can see here, come on, this light's being tricky. His visor does indeed light up. It's kind of pointless on display, but hey, it still looks cool. The piece looks great. Moving over, we have not so special piece, but piece nonetheless. Um. Mecha Quarter Scale Terminator T800. Um, the one that's my first quarter scale piece, picked it up a few years ago. Christ, probably five years ago now, actually. Um, and what can we say about this piece? Uh, it was the best quarter scale Terminator on the market, prob um, figure wise, like posability, until the Hot Toys one. And until I get enough money for the Hot Toys one, this will have to do. I'm going to uh, paint the base black so it doesn't stand out as much. But yeah, for a $50 piece, it looks really great. Now we have something you guys probably haven't seen yet, and those are my Dolphs. So, I'll open them up. I like to have my Hot Toys figures most of this time displayed with their respectable movies. Well, Hot Toys figures, six scales, if they have them. So first off, you have Baby Doll from Sucker Punch. Nice little view on her. Again, these are all the poses I have them in, and I find the best for me. There's Baby Doll. Going down, really, really shitty movie, <laughs> Jonah Hex. But the figure, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. This is from DC Direct. And it's the 13 inch uh, Jonah Hex figure. Surprisingly good face sculpt on this one. Which you wouldn't really expect from DC Direct. When you going down, you have his revolvers. Then pants, weathered pants, the boots, and the display stand. Oh, pretty good piece for the price I paid. Um, you can get these for about $30 nowadays. Down you have probably the second favorite piece in my collection, and that is the DC Direct Harley Quinn. Great figure, top to bottom. Um, I love her, and I personally like her a lot more than the upcoming Sideshow release. Give her a face for you. I heard anybody like the suit, the cuffs, the diamonds, the boots. And the little pom-poms on the head. I just, I don't know, I love this figure. Harley Quinn is probably one of my favorite DC comic heroines. And I don't know, I found this piece captures her in real Bruce Timm, uh, sorry, yeah, Bruce Timm style. And it's just perfect. Going down, you have my sideshow Hellboy and Cronin figures. Again, displayed with the Blu-ray. Uh, Cronin, really underrated piece. Um, yeah, it would have been probably a bit cooler if Hot Toys had made him, but this is back in the days when you had Sideshow and Hot Toys to, that were competing. So, yeah, what, can, what can you do? Oh boy, I find is a really great piece. Not as good as the, as the Hot Toys one, of course, but for his time, really awesome. He was my first believe it or not, 12 inch figure, and he's probably still one of the favorites in my collection. 
Uh, the bodies can be a bit fragile, as mine has had a few cracks, but they're all under his shirt, so you can't really tell. And yeah, those are the Hellboy sets. I do actually have an Abe coming in soon, um, which she's probably going to go behind the Blu-ray. Close that one, on to the next one. Okay, let's see. Open this down, there you go. You have my Watchmen display. This features, again, all DC Direct Watchmen and the Blu-ray. Rorschach, looking fine as ever. Really, this is a probably really detailed piece. It probably rivals the only DC Direct piece that probably rivals Hot Toys quality. Um, really great lighting to Jackie Earl Haley too under that mask, which is a big surprise. You have the grappling gun. Yeah, the coat, the pants, everything. He is the only DC Direct figure to be in real, true, well, true, I say true, lightly, in basic, um, essential 1-6 scale sizing. As you have Dr. Manhattan and the Comedian, which are, oh, about 13 and a half inches tall, so they're a bit out of scale, but Manhattan is tailored suit, head to toe. And you have Comedian out in the back with his two guns out. By far, n not as good as the Hot Toys one, but hey, uh, I'll make do with what I have. And then, Director's Cut of Watchmen. Moving up, this isn't as relevant of a Blu-ray. I just have it here until I get some of the Batman animated series Blu-rays, if and when they're released. But I think it looks good with the set. This is the DC Direct Batman. And the DC Direct Batgirl. To make me a great companion set with the blues and blacks for capes and the yellows. Um, they look great together, I find. And the blue ray just adds a bit to them. I should say here, other than this Batman doesn't have saggy armpits. So come on, Sideshow, get, get together. $100 collectible does it, why can't yours? Okay, moving up, you have another character from a pretty bad movie, um, The Spirit. Don't have a DVD for him yet, but hopefully I will soon. Um, not really a real actor likeness on this one, so you could pass this off as a comic license uh, likeness if you really wanted to. Um, the red tie, the jacket, surprisingly really good on the soft goods department. Just the figure is subpar. Now moving up we have the original release Hot Toys Joker. Which I personally don't mind this figure even though the head is a bit off from Heath Ledger. So you can see from the sides. You have the card and Joker behind. You have the jacket, the suit, and the vest below it. Pants, the chain, boots, and the stand. And continue the trend. It's displayed with the Dark Knight Blu-ray. That's my middle shelf. And then, going over, we have my next D12. Excuse me. The new addition to my collection. Mili Jovovich as Alice from... Resident Evil Afterlife. This is probably my favorite piece of my collection right now. As you can see, she's posed great. Figure looks fantastic. And has a great likeness to Actress Miliovich on the cover of Resident Evil Afterlife. So, I think this really fits. Uh, it's a fitting display to have these two paired up together. Going down, you have Black Widow, portrayed by Scarlett Johansson. A uh, great figure, um, pretty underrated in my opinion, there's not much fanfare going on for her, and I have no idea why. Why don't you get some nice little view of the piece. Again, posed for, this is my personal preference, poses. Nothing too extreme, but nothing museum either. 
And down you have the DC Direct Catwoman, which is by far way better than the Sideshow one, who just looks out of proportion. Uh, the suit looks like leather on this one, even though it's a vinyl material. Again, the scale could be a bit better, but I'm not going to complain considering when this figure was made. Then going down, you have the third and fourth pieces I picked up for my collection after Hellboy were Freddy and Jason. I know this isn't the, J uh, the Jason I've seen in Freddy vs. Jason, but it'll do until I find a copy of him. You have Freddy over there. Getting fine as hell. You have the Blu-ray. Good, good flick, by the way. Everyone should check that out if you're a horror fan. Jason. I find these old Zer Satchel figures are really underrated and pretty hard to come by, so if you guys can find them at a good price, definitely pick them up. Um, really, really worth it. And then, give you a quick little view of this setup, which I was an idea from a YouTuber um, around here who has the details posted up on these Expedit bases, which mine feature under the drawers all of the little bits and bobs for my statues. Um, great way of storing them. This is just some utility stuff and some NES box, sorry, N64 boxes. This one's just empty. And more utility stuff. Um, Q-tips are perfect for cleaning those hard to read spots on statues. And paintbrushes as Victor, my friend Victor, man Victor uses. Um, this one is all Hot Toys accessories. Below it just some knives and again more utility stuff. Okay, so this is my major wall collectible wise and I'll move on to my Star Wars collectibles. Okay, Star Wars wise we have the uh, canvas painting a friend of mine from school did. Um, Rita does a really fantastic job on pop art paints, paintings, so love that piece. Needs to deserve a great spot in my collection. So, Stormtrooper print. Then you have uh, my complete collection of McCoy concept figures. Which I am really proud of, as Wolf McCoy is probably one of my favorite conceptual artists next to H.R. Giger. Cross. And then two at the bottom are just figures that match the set, and that's the first edition, Boba Fett, from the Holiday Special, and Darth Malik from my favorite Star Wars game, Old Republic. Okay, and then while we're over, we'll start the video game stuff. We have a stern pinball machine, uh, Stingray, fully functional, and gets a lot of use in my game room. Then up top, again, I've collected all scattered all over the place, you have the Predator bobblehead, Super Mario plushie, some Star Wars Christmas lights, and the Aura Interactor Vest, which you use as kind of like a virtual reality vest that vibrates when you hit in games and stuff. Beside it, you have another print by a friend of mine. Um, I'll link to her site below. She has a lot of great anime prints and custom drawings. So, so yeah, Megan, um, shout out if you ever see this video. Now, this is a weird project I've been working on for a long time. It's an arcade cabinet that's been gutted, uh, runs a PlayStation 2, and uh, plays Time Crisis. I'm working on getting a glass front made and finishing up the whole front of the cabinet. And a man cave without a mini fridge. <laughs> and just a few VHSs and stuff. Over this wall, you have my original Xbox games. Down, get a closer view of them. Yeah, and across a few of my favorite prints, I have a uh, rogue favorite, one of my favorite cosplayers, Chantel, aka Zombie Bit Me, and check that out. To Gambit, what up, guys? <laughs> and then beside, the have another Gambit and a rogue print. Makes the man cave really pop. And you have this TV. 
with a laser disc player, which I love this thing, and one of my many original Xboxes, both of which look awesome on a widescreen tube TV. And while I'm down on the floor, we'll go to my enormous PlayStation 2 collection. Which is probably my largest and my favorite system to collect for. Go across. There are almost 300 games for, in this collection for me. Most of my imports are somewhere completely separate. So, sorry guys, I don't have my imports on display. And as you can tell, all alphabetical. And then going down, we have my small but eh, pretty substantial Blu ray collection. Save for the ones that are on display, of course. Then just a few of my Star Wars paperback books that I've read. Again, this is a small portion of them because when I started, this sh these two shelves were full of books as well as the Blu-ray shelf. And then the PS2 has grown at a frightening rate and so is the Blu-ray collection. So the books are slowly but surely getting knocked off. Then, moving up here, we have my Star Wars statue and bust collection. Um, all the busts are from Gentle Giant, starting with the Obi-Wan Kenobi in clone armor, Luke, Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker, Sith Anakin Skywalker, General Grievous, and in the back you have Zuckus or 4LOM, depending on where you live and the faction figure cards you have. You'll be known by different names, but I call him Zuckus. Then you have my Fett Family Legacy shelf, starting with the Gentle Giant Django Fett bust, the Kurobukiya Django Fett statue, the Boba Fett traditional mini bust, the Shea mini bust behind, and the Star Wars Unleashed Django and Boba statuette. And a bit lower we have the Anakin Skywalker Kurobukiya, the Leia, and Stormtrooper, also Kotobukiya, with a few more of the Master Replicas 45 scale lightsabers, a few of the Gentle Giant bust ups, and the Gentle Giant Clone Trooper, which is probably my favorite bust in my collection, next to Shea. Then down there we ha below we have a few more Outcast figures, which I wish I had space for. You have the Malgus by Gentle Giant that came with Old Republic. The Darth Maul Artifacts Plus. In the very back, you have the F Star Wars Unleashed Darth Maul statuette. Okay. Now, going up, we have the start of the rest of the video game stuff, uh, which I'll cover in. I'll try to get it in one take. Top, you have my other Xboxes and Spare N64. The box, Time Crisis 2, Batman Beyond DVD box set, and the Batman Animated Series DVD box set. Paid a fortune for these two, um, but they get a lot of use, so I don't mind. Box Quickshot 2 Turbo. Have the Grand Theft Auto Store Display Cube, and a box Sega Dreamcast. You have my 360 and my Odyssey 2. My favorite console of all time, the Vectrex. 3DO. You have Sega Master System and a Super Nintendo. Have a Virtual Boy in the carrying case. I also do have a boxed Virtual Boy in storage. We have the GameCube, the Wii, and the Intellivision. We have the ColecoVision with a Tekken Fight Stick on top. Vader 2600, PS1 Slim with the screen. A giant stack of PS1s and a PS2 Slim with my TurboGrafx-16. Then you have the Atari 7800 
and Magic Thunder Jr. Moving on to games, just you have my Atari 2600 games with some 7800 mixed in with a Kudabukiya Artifacts Plus Map Man statue. Sega Master System games with a NECA Map Man bobblehead. Super Nintendo games. Yes, that is the rare and elusive EVO. Probably the grail of my video game collection. Oh, this is only a small chunk of my Super Nintendo games, as the rest are up in my room, which is where my Super Nintendo display stand is. Thrust door display. Oh, and you have a Ivy. I can't remember who made this. You have Genesis. And you have Batman statue from the DC Universe Online collection. GameCube games. Move Resident Evil aside, let's see what's behind it. Then you have a uh, Donkey Kong figure. And then you have uh, a stack of miscellaneous games. So you have some DS in here. Got some Neo Geo, some Atari, some, sorry, 400, some 32X, a lot of Vic 20, PSP. Uh, some more Odyssey 2, and then you have the Blu-ray collector set for The Dark Knight Rises. Below it you have some 3DO, the C3PO and R2D2 coin banks, and the Darth Vader coin bank, game track for the Xbox, and some just miscellaneous Atari 2600 games, going all the way down to the bottom. Here you have my Mortal Kombat fight stick with my PS3 wheel. Hey. Tekken statue, or figure, sorry. And 64 games, there's no real way to display these, so nothing special in there, take my word for it. So, um, TurboGrafx-16 with, I can get these out of the way, ColecoVision behind it. I have a giant spindle full of loose Dreamcast games. Um, yeah, again, like I've said before I, in a previous video on a different channel, I I don't usually collect disc-only games, but yeah, and they were so cheap. It was like $5 for a giant stack. I couldn't really pass it up. Then my pitiful PS1 collection. Then some more Dreamcast games. Two X rentals and some actual original case games. A Batman mini bobblehead. Then you have my NES collection. with my complete Virtual Boy library. Yes, that is complete. Um, everything but Jack Brothers. You have some boxed NES. Then my two favorite, well not two favorite, just I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. And I have the original two on display. And behind them I have just a few, some of the black box games behind it so not hiding anything special. And a evil Batman statue at um, made by the same company that made the Poison Ivy, but again, it's slipping my mind. Pick up, you have the Kotobukiya Bishojo Captain Shepard statue with my Xbox 360 games. Some of them started to get double stacked. Moving up, you have the Kotobukiya Batman from the Arkham City Collector's Edition with a boxed Atari Lynx and boxed Lynx power adapter. 3DS, some Wii, and the soundtrack for Majora's Mask. You got PS3, Collector's Edition of Fallout, and again, more games behind it, but I'm not going to bother moving that. Okay. Then you have television games, then box and television games Sega CD and Sega Saturn. With a little bit of a diorama of Hicks fighting an alien. Okay, sorry, um, my camera cut out. With the end, diorama of Hicks fighting an alien. And you have the Kotobukiya Injustice statue. Just angle on that for you guys. And this contain these containers contain all my spare cables, controllers, sweet everything for all my systems. Okay, then you have the Super Nintendo Mini up top. 
And the systems that my most used systems are the Super Nintendo. I keep these all plugged in, by the way. Uh, Se Sega Dreamcast, the N64. The PS3 is usually there, but it's upstairs right now, being used as a Blu-ray player. Um, cable box, my Sega Saturn, and down below you have my NES Advantage, with the NES Advantage. Okay, coming up top. We have, I'll move this cup out of the way. Hill Ghost, the Grunt, Another giant blue Spartan bust. The Kotobukiya Red Spartan statue. The Joyride Studios Red Spartan. The McFarlane Hillary H. Limited Edition Monument statue. Joyride Brute. Uh, Koto Chief. And some Hasbro 12 inch figures. And in the corner. End off with some dragon military figures. And then right here, he have my Sega Th CD 32x Genesis combo, which is hooked up to this Commodore 64 monitor. So there you have it, guys. This is my collection room. I'll give you a quick little 360 around. So, yeah, there you have it, guys. That is my collection room as of February 2014. Hope you enjoyed, guys, and please leave any requests below for any upcoming reviews. Thanks, guys. Remy out. One last quick note before I go. Um, for I have this one that will display in my room, which just features my Horse Harris Gambit, some graphic novels, and some more just statues and some busts. Um, so I got a display sign up top, signed Mike Mignola print, some more Star Wars pieces across the top, and then over here, big ass Silent Bob in the corner, life size fat, and then, sorry about the mess, some comics, more comics. And uh, question I get a lot, question I've actually gotten a couple times through PMs is, what do I do with my boxes? Well, bam, boxes, boxes, more boxes, and these are just thick scale boxes. Okay, guys, uh, now I'm sure I'm done. Peace.